Hello and welcome to this episode of our Rhinoplasty for Residents and the Foundations of Facial Plastic Surgery webinar series. We really hope you have a great time watching this show. Thank you, Cameron. Uh, can you see my slides and hear me all right? Excellent. Um, first of all, I'd like to pay tribute to Richard and to uh, George Marcells. We uh, run a rhinoplasty conference every um, three years, which uh, everybody around the world is welcome to come to. We have great faculties, uh, including our own. Just uh, telling you where I come from, which is near Melbourne, just uh, southwest of Melbourne, which is Geelong. This is my town. I have fond memories of South Africa, having worked at St Mary's Hospital in uh, Marion Hill for three months back in uh, 1983 as a medical student. And uh, one of the best times of my life it was. So if you have, um, if you poll an audience as far as setting the tip first or the dorsum, you'll find that in most polls, 90% set the dorsum and then set the tip because they feel the tip can go anywhere. Um, however, I'm in the 10%. My contention is that the dorsum can be set anywhere. Um, the tip has a limited range of positions that allows tip configuration to be acceptable. Um, a nostril shape and base position will determine the best aesthetic tip projection. So long thin nostrils need the tip to be set back. Short wide nostrils need increased tip projection and a good nostril shape should have little if any change. So let's start off with a, an example. Uh, this is a, a young girl who's uh, got a blunted tip. And if we look up the nose, we see the nostrils are probably a little bit blunted and a little bit rounded. And if we look back at her original, we think that that tip probably needs to come out. So I do a little bit of a planning on the t uh, in the photo room. I pull it forward. I see what good nostril shape is. And that is my setting for my uh, 3D simulation. I do a lot of 3D simulation for these cases. I want the nose tip to come down and I want it to come out a bit. So this is my pre, this is my planning photo, and then we'll see where we get to with our surgery. And then if we look up the nose, this is my planning for nostril shape, a little bit more teardrop shape with a little bit more tip projection. And this is what we've achieved. So in actual fact, that gives me the best tip projection. Now, before I did this, I had a lot of trouble in setting the tip and in setting the dorsum because I would run into trouble sometimes where I couldn't get the tip back or I couldn't get the tip out far enough or I couldn't close the nose or I couldn't, or I had a huge amount of redundant skin at the end. And skin shrinks to a certain extent, but the place it doesn't sh shrink as much as the rest is the tip. The dorsum will shrink quite easily because the skin is much thinner there. So if we look at it from the side and we look at what we've achieved, we're fairly close. And we've bought, I wanted to bring the tip down in that angle and we've brought it down and there's a little bit of super tip problem there. I'm obviously got a little bit of asymmetry. And if we look at that one, we have the same problem and there's the, the, the reverse of that asymmetry, but acceptable. So if I look at someone in the basal view, when she sniffs, now this is, harks back, I've learned a, a lot from Richard over the years. This is an external valve problem, but very narrow nose. So I feel that not only are the nostrils long and thin, they also lack support. So I'm going to take the tip back, but I also need some support to hold the, nost the nostril out because when I hold the nostril out, it acts, the, the shape is not as bad as it looks uh, beforehand. I'm a very much a, um, in the camp now of, soft tissue preservation. And if any of you haven't read about how to do the soft tissue preservation, say Barish Chakia's uh, descriptions are fantastic. But if I look at this, part of the problem with this, and there are two, two reasons to support the lateral wall of the nose, or the two methods of supporting the lateral wall of the nose. One is to add stiffness, such as Rick Davis does with articulated rim grafts or Dean Toriumi with lateral crural strut grafts and pushing the tissue down. But the other is to allow the normal musculature to pull the nostril out when somebody breathes, which is why somebody has nasal obstruction when they have a facial palsy. 
Now with a, with a preservation rhinoplasty, this is subperichondrial, and this is subperichondrial, and we're leaving the muscles attached to the perichondrium. So as when we unite it back at the end, the muscles are still attached. Whereas if we go super perichondrial, what we do is we finish up detaching the muscles and we can have a problem, and I'll show you that in a minute. This is preserving Patangi's ligament as now, which I never thought was important, but I think that's also important now. So if I look at her postoperatively, that same woman that we were looking at, so we've got a reasonable nostril shape. We've got the, the gull wing type of nostril as uh, David Gillette was pointing out, but look at this here. You see this little swelling here? This is because in those days I was doing it extra periosteally. This is the muscle of the lateral, um, the muscle that holds out the, uh, the uh, alar part of the dilatin areas, although there's a huge block of muscle here. So nowadays I will not allow this to happen. So that little lump there is all of that muscle disappearing laterally. So now I do it subperichondrially and that solves that problem. I've made her a little bit low here, of course, but from the side view, she's okay. This was her collapse beforehand and postoperatively that's, so that's her sniffing in and that's her trying to sniff in afterwards, before and afterwards. Sorry, that one's a little bit blurry. This is a post-operative deformity that I see quite commonly and I don't like it. And when you look at somebody from the front, it's like this. So this is a, a secondary rhinoplasty with this secondary deformity. This has become more common since we've been changing tip configuration, uniting domes and getting an excellent tip configuration. But in people who have a vertical orientation of their alar cartilages beforehand, and we unite them and evert them, we may take this up with the mucosa and you get this depression here as well, which is just uh, tented tissue because somebody's taken out the superior part of the alar cartilage as well. The answer to this, and, and I don't like the look of it, is to release the mucosa in the vault. So I've done a planning just to change her. I only have an early post-operative result here, but uh, three months, but this is, this is what I plan to do to get that better shape here. And that was her post-operatively. And if you look at it from the side, that was what I was planning to do. And I've been able to bring that down. I mean, I've, I've increased her projection a little bit and we'll talk about that in a moment, which has helped as well, planning and post-operatively. So we've brought this down, which I find, I, I just find it aesthetically not pleasing. When you push your nose back, and this is a clay model that I've made, uh, you see this, the nostril buckles. And if you look at this, somebody on the table, I've simulated on the table, he's already got a little bit of this retraction here. Push it back, it gets worse. And if any of you have been doing rhinoplasty long enough, you'll know situations where the, 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 the rim just will not sit where you want it to sit. So this man here, before, he's got this, this is just a pre-existing position. He's never had a rhinoplasty before, but lifting the tip has straightened out that alar margin. And it's a much more aesthetically pleasing nose and he can also breathe better. And as you can see there, just lifting it up. Secondary rhinoplasties are a problem why does this woman look so um, flat, in the, flat in the nose and flat from the side? Looking up the nose, you can see the nostrils are very round. So she must have increased tip projection, unless you think the nostrils are too large, in which case you may do a, an alar base reduction. I'm not really gonna talk about that at the moment. I'm just gonna talk about nostril shape for the moment. It just gets into too much otherwise. But if we look at this, this is my plan beforehand. This is my result afterwards. And you see, I haven't achieved what I wanted to there. My planning's not so good there on the 3D, but I've tried to make the nostrils more teardrop shape. And when I look afterwards, I've, I've achieved that a little, although I have left the nose off to the left-hand side a bit. That's my plan, increased projection. That's my result from the side. And you can see that I've left that little anterior 
pucker which annoys me a lot and I want to fix it, but she doesn't want me to. From the other side, which is what, the, what side I prefer to show, I've been able to achieve a reasonable result and get a much better shape. The nostril shape's important in determining my tip projection, where I want to do, and then I have to set my dorsum. So good nostril shape is aesthetic. It's dependent on tip projection and tension and it maximizes the airway. Tension is important because if you have a tense nose, you won't be able to pull it out sideways, neither will the musculature. Whereas if the nose is floppy, like that other one I showed where I put the cotton bud in, maybe it's just a, a matter of adding strength to the lateral wall to, an, to achieve some sort of uh, airway. Um, a good nostril shape maximizes the airway. And there is a range of acceptable but um, oval to teardrop shape seems fairly good. However, morphing allows a range of noses, some of which may not be possible. So I let the tip be my guide and I don't go out of that very small range. Otherwise I get into trouble on the table by predicting something that I can't achieve. So nobody would choose a larger nose, but if you don't show them, if, but if you don't show them the small and the large, they would never know. So show them, work out where you want the tip when you morph it, and then only show the patient that one. Don't show them something smaller. And if they ask for something smaller, tell them to see somebody else. So this is a, a much better shape, less boxy, obviously recess the tip slightly and straightened out the septum and I get a much more aesthetic tip. Secondary rhinoplasty, Vertical alar cartilages, which gives this terrible indentation here. Post-op, he's only two weeks post-op here. That's all I can show you at the moment, but obviously a much better shape. An over-projected nose. There's no way I'm going to be able to do anything to this without doing an alar base, because even if I pull her back, the nostril shape's not too bad to start with. So if I pull her back, but look what I've done. The nostrils aren't even even. I don't even know how I've done this, but obviously sometimes if you pull a nose sideways, you'll change the nostrils, but it's, it, it's possibly one of my articulated ALR rim grafts that's too long there and buckled out. But anyway, it doesn't look too bad from the, if I look at it from the side, I'm okay. Um, a classic vertically oriented ALR cartilage with uh, breathing difficulties. And these patients often complain that they've got large nostrils. They haven't got large nostrils, they've just got a badly shaped nostril. You've just got to correct that. And you see this pinching in look is an ugly look and, and one that you want to, want to fix. So this is my planning, I need to lift the tip. I've learned a lot from Richard and what I do to the upper lateral cartilages when I do this. And I shorten the columella. This is my planning and this is where I've got to. Not perfect in the columella, but better. That's my planning and that's where I've got to. The nostril shape to me is aesthetically pleasing and the amount of nostril shell, I haven't changed the size of the nostrils at all, but she doesn't complain of large nostrils anymore. And if I look at the basal view, these side walls on the right are much straighter than they are on the left where you have the pinching. Secondary rhinoplasties, this woman on the left had six rhinoplasties. Uh, with, she had a nose full of Gore-Tex and all sorts of stuff. Terribly scarred, alar base excisions, almost impossible. Take it out, fix it up. Composite graft were, quite, were required in here. I couldn't, there was so much scar in here, I could not release that. Composite graft pulled it down and gives her an aesthetic, a much more aesthetic uh, nostril shape. Same with her hanging columella with ALR retraction. Sometimes just projecting the nose can sort that out. So the benefits, of, it allows you to work with what you've got. So you do the minimum to create a good nose. It means you can always achieve what you propose and you never get into the ridiculous situation of over reducing the dorsum, which you then have to rebuild because the tip's impossible to match. There are flaws in the logic. It doesn't take into account nostril resection. What's the ideal nostril circumference? And sometimes if it's over projected, you'll have to do that. Or if it flares, you'll have to do a base excision. There's a small range where you can work where there's acceptance. And it's particularly useful in secondary 
uh, rhinoplasty. So on the patient, I set the base, set the tip according to the nostril shape. I work that on the software, and then surgery I do as per my morphine. So now I would ask the audience, do you do set the tip first or the dorsum? And I hope I've converted you into uh, setting the tip first. Thank you. Peter, thank you so much, eh? Uh, I think it must have been that um, foundation in KwaZulu-Natal that got you to where you're at now, eh? Yep, I think so. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually quite excited. On Friday, I'm operating up there with some uh, colleagues. Um, so just a question that's come through here from Eric. How do you reorientate vertical or cephalically orientated lower laterals? Um, it's... Um... Well, it's a, the question is, do you need to reorient them at all? Um, I used to reorient um, vertically oriented day like cartilages, but in most of these patients, the tip's pointing too far down. So that one that I showed you uh, towards the end who had vertically oriented day like cartilages, once you lift the tip to where it needs to be, they're not vertical anymore. They're in the right shape. So the body of the, it's the body of the ALI cartilage that matters. But if you leave the tip where it is, um, then that's a problem. Now, if the tip's in the right position, there are two ways of fixing it. One is you can divide, you divide the, um, the lateral cross laterally and then, and then uh, suture it to whatever's remaining laterally and push it down. The second one is to, uh, is to leave it where it is and put it in an articulated ALI rim graft, which would be the Rick Davis approach. Um, and and the uh, other people would um, reorient it and push it down. So I think they're the, they're the two ways of doing it. But you, it, I mean, what it looks like on the inside doesn't really matter. It's what it looks like on the outside that matters. You've just got to make. You've just got to be able to achieve that as long as they can breathe. Awesome. Well, well, Peter, um, to you and Richard and Tune and um, David, it's just. Thank you very much. It's been a, it's the first time we had four speakers and you guys have kept your time and so much information out of this. Uh, I think from a, from a sourcer perspective, we must come over and, and come to your guys' Congress. We, when is the next time that you have that one? The plan is the first week of September next year. We have uh, Barry Chak here. We have uh, Julian Rowe Jones, Mil Milos Kovacevic. Um, who else have we got? Uh, Richard or Tun, do you remember? Um, um, I can't think off the top of my head, but yeah. there's, there's, there's yeah. three of our three of our guys at the hey, well, moment. Anyway, ours is going to be at the end of July, and we've got some big dogs as well. We're, we're not ready yet to announce who they're going to be, but uh, we okay. have to get cross pollination in the southern hemisphere. That'd be great. I, I'd love to come back there. It's been a long time. Yeah, awesome. Well, it's going to bring me to the end. We've been going for just over an hour and a half. Um, once again, thank you so much for the speakers, but also to everybody around the world who's, who's logged in. Uh, we appreciate you guys waking up in all sorts of crazy hours of the day and the night and sitting on. And we'll see you again next Sunday evening. So good night, thank everybody. You. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Take care.